Hi guys, welcome to this very new channel. I can only apologize for the poor quality that you're about to see. Nonetheless, the reason I made this channel is to help spread the science in layman's terms to benefit you guys. And the whole orientation of this channel is going to be based around endurance. And there are other channels such as Jeff Nippard that go into the science behind things such as resistance training specifically for strength, power and muscle mass. So go check him out if you're interested in those kind of activities. But for now, this channel is all about endurance. Today's session is all about dietary carbohydrate and the recommendations from all the science that we've been doing. But to understand why carbohydrate is useful, we need to dive into energy expenditure during exercise. So when we exercise, our body stores the energy that we use in the form of proteins, fats, carbohydrate. Now protein isn't really used that much and only really becomes an energy source during periods of starvation or when we're in a calorie deficit. So we typically exclude protein as an energy source because we don't really use it much. Carbohydrates and fats, however, are our primary energy sources for endurance activity. What we've found is that during low intensity or resting conditions, fat is the primary energy source. As soon as the intensity starts to increase, carbohydrate starts to become the predominant energy source. And we've seen this countless of times in the literature and it's been demonstrated over and over again. The harder we work, the more carbohydrates we use. There is one major issue, however, which is energy storage. Now, our body cannot store carbohydrate like it can for fat. On average, our carbohydrate stores are limited to our liver, which stores approximately 100 grams of carbohydrate, and our muscles, which, depending on your training status, will vary between 350 grams up to 700 grams, which is in total around 450 to 800 grams of carbohydrate in our body. Now for fat, if you were a 70 kilogram person and you had a body fat percentage of 15%, which is pretty good, you could store around 10.5 kilograms of fat. And when we convert that into grams, that's around 10,500 grams. That's a lot more storage capacity for fat than there is for carbohydrate. Now the further thing is how energy dense those sources of energy are. What we've found is that when we burn one gram of carbohydrate, it releases four calories of energy. When we burn one gram of fat, what we find is that it releases nine calories. So not only are our fat stores much, much larger than our carbohydrate stores, they also are more energy dense. Given this information on how energy dense fat is and how much fat we have in the body, it's quite annoying that as we start to exercise at higher intensities, we begin to use less fat and more carbohydrate. So the annoying thing is, we constantly have to keep replenishing our carbohydrate stores because we keep running out of them. They deplete a lot faster when we do exercise and it's really dictated primarily by how long the exercise is and how intense the exercise is. For a quick little demo on the maths behind this, we can calculate how much energy it would require to run a marathon based on evidence that we've gathered that on average it takes around one calorie of energy per kilogram of body weight per kilometer. So if you were 70 kilograms running the marathon, which is 42.195 kilometers, you'd be expending for the whole marathon just under 3000 calories. Do we have enough carbohydrate stores to fuel this? Well, if we're 70 kilograms, we've got around 500 grams of carbohydrate, let's see, and they can provide four calories per gram. So that gives us 2000 calories to work with. Is that enough to fuel us for the marathon? No. What if we do the same for our fat stores? We know that we have more fat stores than we do for carbohydrate, and also fat is more energy dense. Even with a person with 2% non-essential body fat, which is extremely low, the amount of energy available in these fat stores is enough for you to be able to run 180 kilometers non-stop. 
For a typical person with an average body fat percentage of 15%, you'd have over 90,000 calories available, which means you could run 32 back-to-back -back marathons theoretically. A simple graph like this can clearly demonstrate how great fat is at storing energy compared to carbohydrates. It's just a shame that as we increase exercise intensities to those paces that we see around endurance races, our reliance on fats decreases, but our reliance on carbohydrate increases. This is simply because fats can't give us energy at the rate that we need, but carbohydrate can. When our glycogen levels become so low, they don't fully deplete, but when they become at critical low levels, we start to experience symptoms of extreme fatigue and extreme confusion. And what you find is that because we have no carbohydrate left, because this provides energy at a faster rate than fat, once we run out, we've got no choice but to fuel our activities by fat. As fat is much slower at getting energy, we have to slow down considerably, even to the point where you've seen people crawling across the finish lines or just completely laying on the floor, almost lifeless. So it's really good to avoid hitting the wall, or others might call it bonking. It's therefore unsurprising that carbohydrate intake during, before and after moderate to intense exercise is extremely recommended by the sports science literature. So how much carbohydrate do you actually have to eat per day? Well, again, this will largely depend on how much exercise you do and how intense the exercise is. Now, the International Society of Sports Nutrition is a non-profit charity that acts to review the sports science literature periodically and thoroughly, and they're world leaders in the dissemination of sports nutrition science. And they're just amazing at their job. They put thousands of hours into their reviews. So that's what we're gonna be using as the recommendations because they've looked at all the science and they know what the optimal carbohydrate intake is. So what do they say? So for an individual taking part in an exercise program that's based on general fitness, they can get by on a normal mixed diet. So how much carbohydrate is a normal mixed diet? Well, around anywhere between three to five grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight. And you can work this out simply by measuring yourself on a scale and then timesing the lower and upper thresholds by your body weight to get a good range of your daily carbohydrate intake. For those doing more exercise, and I mean anywhere from two to three hours per day, five to six times a week, you will need to increase your carbohydrate intake. And it is recommended that you do because you're using carbohydrate at an increased rate, so you need to constantly replenish it. The recommendations for those which we're gonna be calling endurance athletes, aiming for competitions and training regularly um, and for long periods of time, should eat anywhere between five to eight grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight. Pretty much anyone who's undertaking exercise at really high levels, so we're talking three to six hours per day, five to six days a week, or just are doing a really condensed high volume training for example, during a 100 mile marathon, you'll need to increase your carbohydrate intake quite drastically. And the recommendation is anywhere between eight to 10 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight. Some reviews do push the upper threshold to eight to 12 grams of carbohydrate because we've seen athletes participating in extreme sports having these upper intakes of carbohydrate getting by. For example, in the Tour de France, there was a study done that measured how much carbohydrate intake some of the cyclists were eating, and they were around 12 to 13 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. So the food sources that they recommend are unrefined whole grains, fruits, and vegetables should make up the majority or the bulk of your daily carbohydrate. During periods that we need to replenish glycogen at a quicker rate, for example, after training, um, they do recommend more starchy, sugary foods within the first four hours after training. But we're really gonna be talking about these um, timing and feeding strategies in more detail in the next couple of videos. But for now, I just wanted to give you the guidelines on the optimal carbohydrate intake 
based on the science from the International Society of Sports Nutrition Review. But for now, I hope I've left you with something useful and something that you can take away. Um, let the science lead us forward.